Okay, so welcome back to Happy Hour with Heather and Guest. Uh, I'm Andrew. I'm here speaking with Tom McKay. Welcome to the show. Thank and, you uh, so much. I see no Heather though, but that's a bit of a disappointment. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, it's um, yeah, I, I'm sometimes referred to as that other dude, Andrew, in the in oh. the marketing of the show. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it, if you'll allow me a, a tangent before I start asking you the hard-hitting questions. Sure. Um, in 2020, Heather and I were taking a, a, an online marketing course together. And mm. one of the projects was you had to create a Facebook group. So she created a group called Happy Hour with Heather and Guest, uh, which was meant to just sort of be a place for you know fans to go and talk about music and post and whatever and then when covid really hit and all the the bands weren't able to play she started live streaming performances onto the group for people to watch mm, so okay. when it when it switched into that she asked me if i would help um and then i just sort of you know i came in and then we've just been expanding you know doing interviews and reviewing music and the whole sort of thing. So while I'm not necessarily, and I chose, she offered to put me on the masthead. And I was like, I was like, well, it's, it's happy hour with Heather and guests. That's already a brand. I don't want to, I don't want to come in and, you know, have an asterisk and say happy hour with Heather and guests. And that, you know, we can just say, and that other dude, Andrew. So. <laughs> I like that story. That's a very good story. Thank you. Yeah, it's it, I, I got tons of them, but I won't. I won't. I certainly won't hog the spotlight. But uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I listened. The album is called "Call to the Damon Sultan," which yes. uh, is yeah, coming there, there out. Are, every- there are multiple pronunciations of that, as far as in, like Day, Damon's or Demon, uh, however you want to pronounce it. It works. Okay. By the way. I, yeah, I mean, I, I I had only usually heard of that from the like psychological. Like you, you know, like Jungian sort of the the daemon is your is something you want to try to to invoke. Um, yeah, but- yeah, yeah. I got that reference. Uh, like the demon sultan is basically like a it's a, a H.P. Lovecraft reference specifically gotcha. to uh, to uh, Azathoth. Anybody who's listening to this podcast or watching this on wherever this is getting uploaded, I'm sure will know way more about that than I do. But uh, that was something I was pulling from was uh, Lovecraftian references along with uh, the music. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's it's sort of a, a universal term that has a lot of definitions. Um, but uh, yeah, the album is called Call to the Damon Sultan. It's out February 18th. So a couple weeks. Um, and you yourself... Uh, aside from being a musician, you're also the creator and host of Metal Robot Reviews. Correct, yes. And um, <clears throat> about the album, I would say it's really a blend of everything. You know, I, I was I kept trying to figure out like, okay, what's what's a good umbrella term or genre to kind of pigeonhole this? And you really can't. It's got, I mean, it's it's a combination of all the, the sort of stuff I like. You know, it's got progressive, symphonic, black, death. The the vocals are both operatic and harsh. Um, so it's really everything. Uh, so well done. I guess that's where, I'm, <laughs> that's where I'm headed with that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's, mo- I think, it, it, I feel like there might have been a question there, but like to just go over that. Yeah, there was, that's a byproduct of doing metal robot reviews for so long because you listen to so much music over the years, uh, reviewing it for the channel. You start picking up a lot of different uh, styles, a lot of different techniques. And I think subconsciously, I just included all of it into the album, whether I was aware of it or not. Well, it all, it all works really well together. You know, you. obviously a lot of those genres tend to go hand in hand, mm-hmm. but um but it's really well, I, I mean, I really felt like it was an entire, the album should be listened to front to back because it's really an entire sort of, you know, story that's happening. Um, I, I, I think I wrote down, I felt like this would be the soundtrack to any kind of medieval, you know, medieval <laughs> empire film or something. You know, if you had, <laughs> yeah, it was just, and, and the opening to uh, the title track it mm-hmm. sounded a little bit like the theme from Jaws, 
the just the first two mm. you know that sort yeah. of harsh the the back and forth two notes and then obviously it, it gets more complex but um yeah you could thank nathan gross for that one he wrote the entire opening of the album okay. uh uh, like I just gave him the chord progression that uh, occurred in uh, Dishonored Kings and said, have at it, enjoy. And then he came back with that and I damn near creamed myself, but that's the same. <laughs> it yeah, was well, so it, good. It is. It's really, I mean, if you're into any of the styles of music that I had mentioned before or any of those genres, or if you're just into good music, really, you're going to find something on this album that you'll really enjoy. Um so so yeah when when it comes pre-order it now i know it's on Bandcamp. um yes. there's a track uh with the great Lindsay schoolcraft as well doing vocals so um again if you're a fan of her music you should definitely pick this up but uh i i didn't really know what to expect coming into it um you know the the i i had so I guess I had sort of done a little bit of research once I knew I would be speaking to you, mm-hmm. but I didn't. I just sort of had no idea that it would have all the elements in it that that I was going to experience. So it was. I was pleasantly surprised, and uh, I'm looking forward to going back. You know, now that I've listened to it once, going back and sort of unpacking the subtlety that I'm sure is in you know in a lot of the songs that I didn't hear the first time. But uh, so I guess the the genesis of the album was, you know, whether or not, like you said, subconsciously, it was reviewing all this music. Um, did you I mean, are, you're a fan, I would imagine, of most of the genres that that appear on the album. Yeah, in multiple different ways, like the influences that I knew I was driving from is stuff like uh, like Opeth, which you could probably hear in the growls, uh, obviously, like bands like Epica and Nightwish. Uh, there's a tad bit of, I think, Event Sevenfold in there, but I think that's mostly just like with the grooves and thank God, not the lead one. That would not sound good, I promise you. Um, but it, overall, yeah, well, like all the influence that I was driving, I was drawing from, it's stuff I listen to on a daily basis. Stuff I still listen to like, e- like yeah, every single day, whenever I'm bored or want a soundtrack to when I'm playing video games, like a lot of stuff I listen to. Anything else I just got to add in is just, I guess stuff that I figured would work best for the song in question. Um, and it just kind of built itself from there. Gotcha. So uh, is the plan, you know, when the album comes out, are you going to try and uh, play shows or is this, is this more of a, um, like a project where you're just, you know, enjoying creating it and putting it out there, or are you going to try and follow it up? Right now, I'm enjoying making music, so I definitely think I will make more in the future. Um, as for playing live, like doing live shows, I might consider doing that. There's no plans at the current moment to do any live shows, but eventually that is something I do want to maybe dip my toes into. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even sure. I know you're in Ontario, right? So yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, there are shows playing because uh, not too long ago I saw a uh, Luthero in concert. So it's really like there are shows playing. It's okay. just not happening as often. And there are obviously lots of restrictions involved. Right, right. Yeah, I did. I I would imagine I mean, it, it had been somewhat wide open and I have friends mm-hmm. who are out touring right now. So I guess it's still pretty much uh, happening throughout the U.S. I just wasn't sure, um, you know, if Canada had been a little bit more restrictive or not, but. Either way, um, should you choose to, you know, just keep it making more music, keep it a project inside or, you know, find other musicians and, and, and put it on the stage, I think either would be a great idea. Yeah, I, I have to look into that maybe. I might consider doing live, but for now, yeah, basically just, uh, just putting out the EP, uh, something that I've been working on for about a year and um, just putting it out into the world and, uh, you know, hoping people will enjoy it. That'd be a big bonus. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I really think they will um, just because it, it is a great combination of all this stuff. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's interesting. You talked about the influences. I, I don't, I certainly don't think the influences overshadow what you're bringing to it as a musician. Um, it's, it's great to kind of see how it complements each other. Um, 
So are you also, uh, obviously this is coming out in a few weeks, mm-hmm. but are you, do you have ideas for other uh, songs or that you're working on or a follow-up? It's funny you mentioned that. Um, I don't know if this will be the follow-up, but this EP is actually like the second thing that I've written in terms of uh, original music. There is obviously, you know, previous singles that have been put out like Rain of Fire and uh, Hung by the Wings of Fate, but there's also an entire album basically in in the demo phase right now that I've been working on for since I think 2019. I'm not ready to put it out. I don't even know if that'll be the next thing I put out, but I do have stuff that, I'm, that I am working on that hopefully will be uh, coming out in the next couple of years or so. Like I've got a lot of stuff I'm working on and I hope that uh, eventually it'll see the light. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would imagine that's the, the sort of the beauty about where technology is these days. If you're driven and you have the time, it would mm-hmm. seem that you can you can just keep putting out music, which is uh, which is awesome. But uh, but that's great. I mean, that's great. You have other projects that are sort of in the mix right now. Yeah. Well, again, it's like it's not guaranteed this will be the next one. But uh, yeah, the project uh, that is off to the side right now is in the demo phase. I'm still doing like I'm reworking it as much as possible to try to get it as good as possible. Uh, and then hopefully we'll see what happens. I don't know. Maybe 2023, 2024, we'll have something. Who knows? Yeah. No, I mean, and by who there's a lot that can happen in a couple of years. You you might uh, have some live shows to accompany whatever you're you're doing. Um, you know, it's it's the, the 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 as Joe Strummer once said, the future is unwritten. So exactly. There you go. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I, I didn't really have the time yet to check out the previous singles that you'd put out. So I will be excited to go back and sort of chart the progression to see, you know, if it sounds similar to the latest EP. It or- doesn't. It really does. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll say this much. Like, Rain of Fire, that's just written because it was the song that was the theme song for Metal Robot Reviews. Uh, Hung by the Wings of Fate. You can see that I'm starting to implement more of the symphonic tropes that I would eventually bring on to uh, to this album, but they are nothing the same as Call to the Demon Salt. So be prepared for that. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's always been, you know, it's funny. It's that whole sort of thing. Like, do you read the book or see the movie first? And mm, some, you know, okay. I feel like do you listen to an album, you know, the first album and then go to the latest, to the latest release, or sometimes you listen to the latest release and then go backwards. So in this case, I, I've done both. I've been happy sort of, you know, starting out at the beginning and charting the progress or seeing where they are now and going back and sort of seeing where they started from. So it'll be really interesting to go back and, uh, you know, kind of check out what the trajectory has been. Yeah, but, it's that, it's an interesting progression. I'll say that much. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, you've en- I mean, you not that you've ended up anywhere, but where you are right now is a great place because there's a lot of really cool elements to this album, um, you know, and and it all works really well together. And I'm I'm glad that you know I I had the chance to speak with Lindsay uh, like a year or two ago for my I had a I had a show that I had before this one. Um, which is sort of defunct now, but I spoke to her briefly and she's great. So I'm glad you got it. Oh, she, she's, she's fantastic. She's amazing. I'm glad you got a chance to, uh, to collaborate. Hopefully this will be the start of, you know, many, many collaborations should you choose to go that route. But yeah, uh, maybe, maybe she's technically the second collaboration I've done. Uh, Cause with hung, with hung by the wings of fate, I of course brought on uh, Kylie Briel who I know through Fiverr, my, where I do freelance stuff. Uh, and having her on the song definitely helped. But uh, yeah, having Lindsay on the song, it was definitely, it was a different experience, I must say. Because, yeah, sure. well, yeah, because work with, with Kylie, obviously it was through Fiverr. It was very disconnected kind of a collaboration because I just sent over the stuff and said, uh, have at it. With Lindsay, something of the same thing, but we were talking the entire time, like back and forth, of like, hey, does it sound good? I'm trying this, doing this. How does it sound? Oh, maybe try this, et cetera, et cetera. And it was a very chaotic day. I'll say that much when we were working together for that. And uh, it was very, but it was very 
I'm very happy with how it turned out. And I'm very happy that Lindsay enjoyed herself on this, uh, on this song. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I don't really have a background in production at all. So it's interesting to sort of see how that would work where you're kind of bouncing ideas off of each other and trying to kind of clue the other person in, well, this is what my intention is. And is this coming through? Um, you know, these are, anytime I can kind of pull the curtain back to to someone who doesn't know what's really happening and sort of say, well, this is typically how it actually is. You know, it's not like you go into the, to the, to the recording studio and the engineers there and the keys are, are you know, the, the knobs are all magically aligning themselves. Um, you know, there's, there's blood, sweat and tears that go into it. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's definitely not, I mean, it's, it's more accessible nowadays than it ever has been in the history of music production, but easier. I would not say that much. It's definitely a process. Uh, and there's a lot, th thankfully there's a lot of ways that you can learn how to do that. Uh, you can just go online and find it but that doesn't really make it that much easier compared to like compared to like back in the day it's still a very difficult process of just producing an album producing music in general now was this with the ep was that something that you were pretty much uh not doing every role but sort of overseeing the entire process or was that uh -huh. I basically did everything. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> like, aside, yeah. Like, aside from again, aside from like what Nathan brought to the table with the title track, and of course, uh, what Lindsay ended up doing with the with the uh, the the section I sent her along with the lyrics, um, you know, it, it was basically just all in house. I wrote the guitars. I I programmed the orchestration for the majority of of the album. I wrote the lyrics. I did all of that stuff, and of course, I also did the vocals and track guitars. So most of it was done in house, along with mixing and mastering. Uh, it was very there was very few times I actually, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, where I actually sent stuff out to people, be like, "Hey, uh, help," <laughs> and then got something back. Right, right, yeah, no, that's. I mean, it's it's. So this really is your project, um, basically. Which, yeah, yeah. I mean, with with a couple of with a couple of people who have sort of helped you know, in supporting roles um, along the way. But but yeah, it's incredible. I mean, you've written, recorded, produced, mixed, mastered, the whole shebang. And now mm -hmm. all we have to do is get it out into the world so that yes. people people can enjoy it. So if you're watching this on uh, on our website or YouTube or you're listening to it on the podcast, hit pause, go pre-order uh, Tom's album, uh, I, I certainly give it my endorsement. Happy to do that. You won't regret it. There is there is something for everyone. Now you can hit play and listen to the rest of this. Uh, although you would have, in order to hear me right now, you would have had. <laughs> they, did, they didn't pause. They were just waiting for you to finish your statements. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But we'll, we'll say this is a Terminator timeline. And, uh, you know, it'll... <laughs> Yes, it'll, exactly. It'll make sense somehow, but uh, it all makes sense eventually. This is this is basically the the Zelda timelines. It doesn't sure. make sense at the moment, but if you can like squint one eye, look at it, maybe close the other eye, turn around and look at it. Oh yeah, it makes sense now. It totally makes sense. Well, the important thing is the album comes out next month. Mm -hmm. uh, you should definitely pre-order it and uh and check it out because as i said you'll enjoy it there's a there's a lot of stuff for everyone um and and thank you so much for speaking with me people can find do you have is it all you're on all social media is there a website for people to go to uh so you can find me mostly on socials for my solo projects uh at team k715 on facebook twitter and instagram uh, but you can also follow me on uh, my YouTube show, Metal Robot Reviews. So that's, uh, you can search it up on YouTube. There's the metalrobot.com uh, and for socials, uh, Facebook and Twitter at the Metal Robot and Instagram at the dot metal robot because nothing is ever easy with me. <laughs> right. I always have to bring it all to the max. Gotcha. Well, I, I, I really thank you for taking the time to speak with me. And for those of you of out there, again, go pick up the album. Check out Metal Robot Reviews and follow Tom on social media. And uh, have a good one. Bye-bye.
Yeah, no problem.